Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the uh, session uh, TCTAP 2022 uh, abstract session entitled Coronary Intervention. I'm Takashi Akasaka, Japan, and my co chairman is uh, Dr. Uh, Shaorian Ken. Uh, in this session, we'll, we'll have a four uh, panelist, uh, Dr. Forlam and uh, Dr. Sunanto Onang and uh, Dr. Uh, Osama. Uh, Shoebi and uh, Dr. Uh, Tanlin Tui. Yes. Uh, in this session, we will have uh, six presentations, and each presentation should be uh, within 10 minutes, including a four minute uh, presentation, uh, six minute presentation, four minute discussion. And my co chairman, uh, Dr. Chen, will introduce uh, the, uh, the first presentation. Uh, Dr. Chen, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you all my friends. It's really my great honor to uh, work with you in this particular evening. So let's move to the first speak, Dr. Kageyama uh, from Galway, Ireland. So he will present the impact of geographic disparity on 10 years mortality in the syntax trial. Please, Dr. Kageyama. I would like to present the regional disparities and machine learning prediction of 10-year mortality in syntax trial. We have nothing to declare. In the background, treatment outcome of complex coronary artery disease after revascularization between, differs between countries as we published in five-year maze in Euro intervention. The aim of this present study were to evaluate the impact of geographic disparity on all cause mortality at 10 years. The design of syntax study had been reported previously. Briefly, all comer patients uh, with de novo three vessel disease and or left main coronary artery disease were enrolled and randomized to either cabbage or PCI. Overall, 1,800 patients were enrolled in North America and Europe that was subdivided into four regions following United Nations just came. Subdivided population are as follows. North America, 245 patients. Eastern Europe, 189. Northern Europe, 425. Southern Europe, 263. And Western Europe, 678. These uh, pre-procedural characteristics in this study. Comparison on the five regions are complex. So we took Western Europe, the largest population among the five groups as the reference. The morbidity of anemia was twice as high in North America as in Western Europe. And anatomical syntax score is lower in North America. Syntax score two, 2020, the combination of age, morbidity, and region complexity to predict 10-year mortality was lower in Eastern Europe and Northern Europe. This is the survival curve of 10-year mortality stratified by regions. We can see that North America and Western Europe higher mortality than other three regions. The landmark analysis showed survival curve started to diverge after five years follow-up. Kaplan-Meier analysis showed that North America and Western Europe had significantly higher mortality than the other regions, 30.9% versus 22.0%. The calibration plots of predicted versus observed for all cause mortality showed substantial underestimation of North America and Western Europe population, whereas overestimation were documented for the other regions using syntax score 22020. So the next issue is that can machine learning model include regional differences, can overcome over or underestimation of 10 year debt in syntax score 22020. We took into account the major factor which was proved as independent risk factors of long-term mortality after revascularization in complex coronary artery disease in previous reports with region factor. 24 factors were selected as, and using the uh, gradient boosting model, we separately constructed the model of PCI and cabbage to predict the 10-year mortality. 
we apply the model for internal validation. In both models, the age was the most frequently used for stratification. Other importance was varied between two groups. Applying the GBM with high mortality and low mortality region, we could improve overestimation and underestimation. New GBM model improved AUC of ROC curve, even though the difference was not significant. On the other hand, <clears throat> discordance between actual 10-year mortality and predictive 10-year mortality in Northern Europe and Southern Europe became better than syntax score 22020. Taking into account the established independent risk factors, in addition to syntax score 22020 related factors, we could predict very long-term mortality of the individual patient more accurately. The more factor we need, the more importance of the utility of machine learning become in the field of risk prediction. This is my conclusion. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your excellent presentation. So I think now we have two minutes for discussion. Any question or comment from our panelists? Can I have questions, uh, Dr. Kazaka, Dr. Sunanto? Please, please. Yes, uh, thank you for the presentation, it's very nice. I saw quite a uh, uh, distinguished characteristic for the North uh, Europe. They have a prevalence of diabetes only 60% compared to other regions on average about 30%. Does it will affect the uh, performance or uh, on this predictability of the syntax score? Thank you. Yeah, uh, about uh, yeah, medication, yeah, uh, uh, we have uh, included uh, diabetes and uh, yeah, it's in use, and, but not uh, consulted other yeah, oral medication. Uh, and uh, medication factor is a little bit uh, confused. And yeah, uh, at first we have uh, yeah, some rate of yeah, prescription, but it's deferred and changed uh, for the long time follow up, between the long time follow up. So it's very difficult to consider the a medication condition uh, taken into consider, uh, taken into account in the, this prediction model. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think we are, we are uh, on schedule. So may I ask Dr. Agasaka to introduce next speak? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh... Next uh, talk is entitled Impact of Left Ventricular Ejection Fraction on 10-Year Mortality After PCI or CABG in the Syntax Trials. Uh, this will be presented by uh, Dr. Uh, Shinichiro Masuda. Uh, Dr. Masuda, please. Uh, firstly, uh, let me talk about the background. So as you know, uh, CARBIDGE has been recommended in ESC guidelines of myocardial vascularization as a standard treatment for patients with multiple coronary artery disease and uh, severely impaired uh, left ventricular ejection fraction. Uh, however, uh, impact of vital prognosis at very long term, around 10 years of PCR and CARBIDGE in patients with reduced ejection fraction uh, remain to be elucidated. So the objective of the study was to evaluate the impact of left ventricular ejection fraction at baseline on long-term mortality and to evaluate the differences in 10-year survival of PCA versus cabbage according to LVF subgroups in syntax trial. So this trial showed the methodology. So primary endpoint was 10-year or post mortality. And uh, in this subgroup analysis, uh, we divided all the population into three groups according to the current AC guidelines here. So this trial showed the uh, study flow chart. In the original syntax trial, uh, 1,800 uh, patients were enrolled. And uh, in this study, uh, they were divided into uh, three uh, subgroups. As a result, uh, 
maybe one uh, eight more than one eight percent eighty percent of the population was classified into preserved ejection fraction more than fifty percent, and uh, only nine point four percent population uh, was divided into reduced ejection fraction group. This table shows the uh, baseline uh, pace rate, uh, patient uh, characteristics. So uh, as you can see, uh, all the coronary risk factors were significantly different uh, between uh, three uh, subgroups. And uh, about 30% of the patient with uh, reduced uh, ejection fraction has uh, CKD. And also in patients with uh, reduced ejection fraction and uh, moderate reduced ejection fraction has a higher rate of uh, previous history of myocardial infarction. <coughs> and uh, about 70% about, about of the reduced ejection fraction patient has a three visceral disease. So this will show the uh, Kaplan-Meier results of Kaplan-Meier analysis. So as you can see, uh, uh, between our three area subgroups, uh, there are the significant uh, differences at uh, 10 years or up. So next, I show the uh, Capra Maya analysis according to LBS classification, uh, PCI versus cabbage. So there are no significant differences in all categories, but uh, in patients with reduced injection fraction, uh, uh, the result was uh, borderline and p-value is uh, 0.054. So next, I show the uh, hazard risk. So uh, regarding the all-cause mortality, or in patients with a reduced ejection fraction, less than 40%, um, uh, PCI has a higher hazard ratio compared to cabbage. And a P4 interaction at five years was significant. But uh, at 10 years or up, the P4 interaction disappeared. So this will show the summary. The first uh, 10 years of post mortality was uh, significantly uh, different between three subgroups. Second point, uh, among the patient with a reduced ejection fraction, the instance of 10 year old post mortality was comparable between PCR and cabbage. However, there is a trend toward to higher mortality rate in PCR than cabbage. And regarding the 10 years of post mortality, there is significant interaction between LVA subgroups and treatment at five years forward, but it disappeared at 10 years forward. This is our intention. Uh, uh, only uh, uh, 9.4 population, uh, this is a small sample size, and uh, there is no uh, medication and uh, event, adverse event from six to five years since randomization. And uh, in patient were treated with a first initial PES. And this is uh, my conclusion. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Matsuda. Very interesting result. Uh, this paper is now open for discussion. Any question or comment from the, the panelists? Yeah, just one one quick comment. Please. Uh, I think the big problem for the study is the small sample size in the in the HIF ref and the HIF moderate EF2 groups. So I think the direct comparison between these two groups will be very tough, very hardly to get the positive results. So generally, uh, I think there are two points. Uh, I should make the first is so far because you know it's uh, not easy to get the uh, right heart catheterization measurement about the prevalence of pulmonary hypertension among patients with heart failure. Secondly, I think again because of the small sample size, so mm -hmm. I think a general comparison combining the first two groups with the last group will be reasonable. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you Dr. Chen. Uh, any any uh, uh, yes comment from the uh, yeah Dr. Masuda? No. Uh, uh, can I make some comment? I think uh, this is a very good study. It provides us uh, more data to consolidate the concept that in the patient with impaired LV function, probably we should first refer the patient for uh, cabbage. Uh, and if the surgeon decay and 
in our experience, most of the time, uh, they will decline, and then we can further do the PCI uh, with this practice. Uh, maybe this is more reasonable and give a more reasonable choice for the patient. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, sorry, could you say uh, that more, uh, could you say that again, so more uh, simple, simple, yeah. I think it's okay. Uh, your study and data are very good. Excellent. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So thank you, thank you. Yeah. So. Right. Any other question or comment? If not, uh, it's a time to yes finish, and uh, I will hand uh, the next introduction to Dr. Chen. Yes. Okay. So let's just be the talk here, and you know, you know, Mia uh, to present a predicted and observed mortality at a 10 year follow up in patients with a bifurcate lesion from the syntax trial. Please go ahead. Uh, today, I would like to talk about predicted and observed mortality at 10 year in patients with bifurcation lesion in the syntax trial. Uh, this is a, the present study is a post hoc sub, subgroup analysis of the syntax trial, uh, which was investigated driven extended 10 year follow up on the syntax trial. Uh, for the purpose of the present analysis, patients were categorized in four groups. Patients with the presence of at least one bifurcation lesion in PCI group, patient without any bifurcation in PCI group, patient with the presence of at least one bifurcation in cabbage group, and patient without any bifurcation in cabbage group. Uh, this is a baseline characteristic. Uh, of course, base baseline characteristics are different. Age was two years higher than in patient with bifurcation in both group. Euroscore was higher in patient with bifurcation in PCI group. As we expected, syntax score is higher in patient with bifurcation compared to those without bifurcation in both groups. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in, in left side, in patient with bifurcation compared to those without any bifurcation, the, the significantly higher risk of repeat revascularization at five year is seen following PCI, but not cabbage. In right side, the incidence of death or stroke or MI at five year show same trend, but there is no significant difference. This slide shows Kaplan-Meier curve of all cause deaths at 10 year. Of note, the winner with the lowest mortality, 90.8% is patient without bifurcation in PCI group. The worst mortality, 30.1%, showing red straight line, was seen in patient with at least one bifurcation in PCI group. In PCI group, there was significant difference in mortality between patient with bifurcation and without bifurcation. In contrast, the two blue line, Kaplan-Meier curve for cabbage groups show equipoise for mortality between patient with and without bifurcation. This slide show uh, <coughs> comparison of outcome one stent versus two stent technique in PCI. At five years, there was no significant difference in mortality between one versus two, two stent technique. Whereas 10 years, a two stent technique was an independent predictor of all cause deaths. The PCI technique used to treat the bifurcation may have an impact on long-term clinical outcomes. Uh, this is a summary of clinical outcome. Uh, the presence of at least one bifurcation was an independent predictor of revascularization at five year and 10 year or course mortality in, treated, in patient treating PCI, whereas it had no impact on mortality after cabbage. Uh, there was significant interaction between the presence of bifurcation and the modality of revascularization. The key question is, based on average treatment effect, should you send all your patients with bifurcation to surgery? Uh, the answer is no. A conventional presentation of randomized clinical trials focus on average treatment effect, despite there is a potentially wide range of tra treatment response among patients. The result estimate may not accurately describe the expected response for individual patients. For example, patients color green uh, expected to drive benefit from, uh, from treatment, other in blue uh, who expected to have an equivocal response, and those in red who will be harmed by treatment. 
In randomized trial, average treatment effect results in the kind of marsh color coded uh, patient which express, express a mixed average effect, not in individual patients. As you can see in right side, it is important to identify who is going to benefit or be harmed and who is going to have an equipose outcome in a heterogeneous population. A syntax to <coughs> score to 2020 was developed to uh, predict five and 10 year mortality in the syntax trials and externally validated in the four trials. Uh, this figure involves only patients with bifurcation lesions. <coughs> Uh, this figure shows some patients with bifurcation lesion can be eligible for PCI when stratified by absolute risk difference derived from syntax 2020. Absolute risk difference is the risk difference of 10 year mortality between PCI and cabbage. <coughs> uh, the external validation of the syntax score 2020, uh, ARD of 4.5% offer the sensible cutoff for PCI, equipos, PCI, and cabbage or cabbage better. For example, in case one, uh, predict 10 year mortality rate is 10.5 after PCI and 8.3 uh, after cabbage. Therefore, the patient can be referred for either PCI or cabbage. But uh, in case two, uh, the predict 10 year mortality is uh, <coughs> 57.8 in PCI and 40.8 uh, after cabbage. Therefore, cabbage should be recommended. Uh, this fact can be explained more simply using Capra Meyer curve. Among patients with one bifurcation, according to the treatment benefit predicted by Syntax 2020, there was equipose for all cause mortality between PCI and cabbage in two quarters. Uh, whereas uh, cabbage was uh, <coughs> two remaining quarters. In summary, among patients with bifurcation, PCI had a significantly higher risk of all cause death compared to cabbage. However, this average treatment effect can be mitigated by calculating an individualized 10 year vital prognosis using Syntax 2020. Uh, this is my conclusion. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. Well, thank you very much for your amazing presentation. So you provide a very comprehensive, very comprehensive data to show the difference in long-term 10 years uh, of cause mortality between different strategies for bifurcan leader. So just one question. Uh, actually, you know, a few years ago, the combination of BBC1 nautical trial reported very high rate of all cause deaths after two stentanic compared to two uh, one stentanic, but it's uh, different from your finding. So your data showed non significant difference within five years, follow up by positive difference after five years. So what's your comment? Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for your comment. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, a recent meta analysis shows uh, there was no difference between one stent versus two stent technique. Uh, on the other, on the other hand, uh, data on very long term, -term mortality in patients with bifurcation uh, is uh, limited. Uh, in our study, there was no significant difference uh, between one versus and two stent at five year. Uh, whereas at 10 years, uh, the two stand technique was an uh, independent factor of all cause deaths. Uh, this means, uh, yeah, uh, very long term follow up may be needed to assess the uh, superiority of one technique or uh, over another. Yeah, this is my, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, Osama, go ahead. C can I confirm uh, uh, one, one question, uh, Dr. Ninomiya? Uh, you you include the bifurcation, but uh, uh, do you yes include any bifurcation? That means uh, we are very much interested in the left main bifurcation. Mm -hmm. so do, if you focus on the left main bifurcation, do you have a different data in this group? Yeah, uh, thank you for your comment. Yeah, uh, this is uh, yeah left main is a very uh, important population uh, in bifurcation groups. So. Uh, we added uh, the left main bifurcation group analysis, uh, but uh, there was no difference uh, at 10 year mortality between PCI and cabbage in terms of the left main bifurcation. 
So yeah, uh, but uh, in our study, uh, study population of uh, distal left main disease is uh, not large, large population. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> in conclusion, yeah, our analysis in our analysis, uh, there was no difference in distal main disease. Oh, thank you. Uh, I see Dr. Osama Chobi is raising his hand. So please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, I'm just uh, also want to comment if there is any data regarding the different types of bifurcations regarding the anatomy, like if uh, there is the difference between true bifurcation lesion Medina 111 uh, versus other types, or do we have any data regarding the extension of plaques inside the side branch uh, or the importance of, uh, of the side branch uh, in, in different groups? Uh, do you have any comments regarding, regarding that? Yeah, uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, actually, I, uh, I invested, investigated the uh, Medina classification. And uh, yeah, true bifurcation is uh, uh, yeah, numerically higher than uh, not true bifurcation, but there is uh, no, uh, no significant difference. But uh, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. As you as you mentioned, uh, the complexity of bifurcation uh, re related with mortality. Oh, thank you. The, I think now is the time to invite Dr. Agasaga to introduce the next speak. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chen. Uh, next uh, talk is entitled "10 Years Survival Benefit and Appropriateness of Surgical or Bacterial Revascularization." based on individual predicted all-cause mortality in patients with complex coronary artery disease. This will be presented by a Professor Patrick Savoy. Please. Thank you. This, um, that's uh, an important uh, topic. And uh, as you could see, I have no personal uh, disclosure. If you look at the average treatment effect as a summary result for 10 years old cause death in the syntaxis, you see that the mortality in the cabbage is 24.5% versus 28.4% in the PCI with an hazard ratio of 1.19, but the p-value is borderline 0.066. Um, based on the average treatment effect, should you send all your patients to surgery? The answer is, of course, no. Um, we have seen this slide. It's an important one. We really need decision tool to improve personalized care in cardiovascular disease. The panel A show you the average treatment effect assessed in an heterogeneous population like we usually do in randomized uh, trial, but in this heterogeneous population, you have uh, in green individual expect to derive benefit from treatment. You have in blue uh, patient to have equivocal response, equipoise response, and you have in red expect to be armed by the treatment. And you end up uh, in the randomized trial, what we call a, a multicolor response in the average. So what we try over the last few years is to identify in a heterogeneous response to the treatment. We tried in advance to segregate the patient population based on treatment uh, response. You have heard about the syntax score 22020 published in the Lancet. Uh, it was redeveloped to predict 10 years mortality and five years maze in the uh, syntaxis trial. And it has been validated freedom, best pre-combat, Excel trial and also has been validated in the registry Credo Kyoto. We have there uh, seven parameter, current smoking age, creatinine clearance, ejection fraction, diabetes, uh, PVD, COPD, and two modifier, the anatomical uh, syntax score and the disease type 3VD of uh, left main. And you have at the bottom the probabilistic uh, formula to predict the mortality. You use the term in blue if you intend to send the patient to surgery and you use the 
parameter in red if you use if you want to use the patient to uh, PCI. Now the syntax uh, screened a lot of patients, four thousand three hundred thirty-seven, and everybody forgot that we randomized eighteen hundred patients, but we had eligible registries only for enrollment. Uh, in parallel in nested registries. And in these nested registries, so you have uh, the inclusion cabbage registry, complex anatomy, not amendable by uh, PCI 70.9%, CTO untreatable with PCI 22%, uh, inability to take antiplatelet medication, refusal to PCI and other reasons. And the reason for inclusion at PCI registry is high risk for cabbage, no graft material, refuse cabbage, small of poor quality of distal vessel. Now, this is an important slide. This slide is a scatter plot of all the patients, 1800, include in the randomized cohort of the syntax trial. On the vertical axis, we have the predicted of observed mortality. The red dots show the individual predicted cabbage mortality, and the blue dots uh, show the individual predicted PCI mortality. The red dashed line is the spline curve for the predicted cabbage uh, mortality, and the red solid line is the spline curve of the observed cabbage mortality. Similarly, the blue dashed line is a spline curve predicting mortality after PCI, and the blue solid line is the spline curve observed mortality post PCI. To predict and observe mortality for cabbage and PCI are nicely, nicely superimposed, demonstrating the quality of the prediction. The difference in predict and observe mortality are ranked by order of magnitude from left to right side. In the first 1,200 patients, there is an absolute risk difference mortality in favor of cabbage. In the last 600 patients, the benefit in survival on an individual basis is in favor of PCI. And according to this individual assessment, 78.3% of the randomized population should have undergo cabbage and 21.7% of the randomized population should have uh, undergo PCI. That proportion can be reduced to 45.8% if we accept an absolute risk difference of 4.5%, like we have demonstrated in the a validation of the uh, syntax 2020 in the most contemporary court of the Credo Kyoto registry. The green frame uh, indicate one case according to the syntax court 2020 who has a favorable outcome with a PCI uh, with an absolute risk difference of 2.1%. Uh, while in case two, a frame in yellow, the profile according to the syntax code 2020 favored bypass surgery with an absolute risk of 16.9% and with a mortality of 57.8% 7, after PCI and 40.8% after cabbage. Cabbage should be recommended. In the syntax cabbage registry, the syntax score 2020 favor cabbage in 92.5% and favor uh, PCI in only 5%. Now, in conclusion, in the syntax trial, uh, randomized and registry population were followed for 10 years. There were uh, 901 patients randomized to PCI. There were 865 patients uh, randomized to cabbage, 192 registered in the PCI registry, and 644 registered in the cabbage registry. In the next pie, we see in dark brown here, the percentage of patients with a predicted survival 
benefit after PCI when compared to cabbage, 22.6%. It is 20.7% in the randomized cabbage cohort. It's only 14.6% in the PCI registry, and it's even low in the registry cabbage with 7.5%. The next pie, dark blue pie showed the patient who actually died in the randomized cohort and registry cohort. And the overall population, the PCI could have been uh, performed in with good outcome, legitimate outcome in terms of mortality in 17.6%, while favor uh, should have been done in 82.4%. Some quite uh, uh, sobering data, but I think uh, this is strictly apply playing the uh, syntax score 2020. We are now uh, more uh, lenient with the um, application to the credo Kyoto who showed that with uh, an absolute risk difference of 4.5%, almost 50% could be included because the credo Kyoto is a modern contemporary uh, uh, registry. So in conclusion, selection of a revascularization model modality has to rely on individual long-term prognosis. The average treatment effect observed in prior does not include the full spectrum of patient with complex coronary artery disease seen in daily practice. The concordance between individual predicted and observed mortality, that's the syntax code 2020, allow us to retrospectively establish the appropriateness of treatment in an old commerce population. The appropriate treatment ratio between PCI and cabbage, one to 4.7, if you strictly apply the uh, syntax 2020, if you apply after the accommodation of the credo Kyoto, you could have almost 50-50. But uh, these patients, when they are properly selected, could have expected long-term survival benefit with percutaneous over-surgical revascularization. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Serois. Unfortunately, we do not have an, enough time to discuss. Uh, I would like to accept one short uh, yes, comment or uh, question from the uh, panelists. Or... Nobody have any question? So uh, maybe I have a short question. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Patrick Chavez. Uh, among the syntax two uh, score, which factor that you think is most predictive of outcome among all the factor? Among all the factor, the age is always the most uh, predicting factors and then uh, ejection fraction. You have seen uh, in the previous presentation with the machine learning, the importance of all the factors. I think that uh, you will find the de detail in the publication, uh, but certainly the age is very critical with ejection fraction. And we have seen also the presence of bifurcation. Mm. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Yes, okay. I was really surprised uh, a nearly complete overlap of the prediction and observed results. Uh, uh, yeah, both in uh, PCI and CABG. Thank you. Yeah, that is the most important thing that we can progressively predict these things better and better and better. Thank you. So uh, I would like to hand uh, uh, Dr. Chen uh, to uh, introduce the next presentation. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Thank you. Let's invite Dr. Masafumi Ono to present one year penalty of biorestorative polymeric coronary artery bypass graph in an OIN model. Please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Uh, now I'd like to start my presentation. I have no issue I to disclose. Uh, I'd like to start to talk about the background. The saphenous vein graft SVG is uh, being used in 80% of cabbage surgeries, uh, despite the limitations, including a painful harvesting and poor patency, uh, potentially due to dilation-induced hemodynamic disturbances, resulting in annoying internal hyperplasia. So the synthetic graft could eliminate the need for harvesting, but so far have failed to perform sufficiently and are not in clinical use. 
So the novel restorative vascular graft, uh, RVZ, is based on the bioabsorbable supramolecular polymer technology and is scalable in length and diameter and can be available off the shelf. So the primary goal of uh, this preclinical work was to assess the technical feasibility of the RVG device and to demonstrate the performance over time via serial angiographic assessments of the graft. So this is a method of the current study. Uh, as you can see on the right side, this is a picture of the, this novel uh, RVG uh, device. Uh, which is composed of the uh, electrode span supramolecular polymer fiber, fiber matrix encapsulating a nitinol microskeleton for kink resistance. A total of 15 SIP underwent cabbage surgery, either with RVG, the 12 SIP, or a SVG, uh, 3 SIP, and uh, follow up up to one year. The RVG or SVG were imparted from the descending aorta to the LAD. LED was ligated upstream of the distal anastomosis, simulating a total occlusion. The study was contact, uh, approved by the ISCAR committee. So serial angiography was performed at baseline one, three, six, nine, and 12 months. As you can see on the right side, this is uh, one representative case of the ROVG graft. Uh, and the angiography, and this is the QFR. QFR is a kind of a simulated physiological parameter uh, derived from the 3D angiographic reconstruction. In this case, uh, this is a 12 month result of the angiography and basal QFR. So this is the results. Uh, on the right side, uh, this is a flowchart of the current study. Uh, briefly speaking, uh, one SIP in the ROVG um, died at the time of bypass surgery due to the surgical error, and two SIP with RVG died prematurely between six and 12 months. And four SIP with RVG were sacrificed early for examination purposes. One of them presented a total occlusion at three months, uh, which was treated as a, a graft failure. And one presented with distal narrowing uh, at three months, one exhibited uh, aneurysm at six months, and another one showed uh, intimal delamination, uh, potentially due to the OCT examination or the wire injury. So finally, uh, chronically, 10 out of uh, 11 ROVGs and three out of three SVGs were patent up to six months follow-up. Until 12 months follow-up, uh, five ROVG and three SVG SIP were kept alive. As you can see on the right hand side, this is a result of the ROVG angiography at 12 months. Uh, as you can see on this movie, uh, ROVG showed the uniform lumen diameter with uh, acceptable flow uh, speed of uh, 14 centimeter per second on average and the QFR value of the 0.93 on average. Whereas this is a result of the SVG angiography at 12 months. As you can see in this movie, the SVG shows the diffuse dilation with considerably slower flow velocity, uh, which is 3.4 centimeter per second on average. Uh, also the QFR value was uh, relatively low, 0.87 on average. Uh, below you can see the micro CT results uh, just as a reference. In the uh, ROVG, uh, there seems to be no significant stenosis all along the graft, whereas uh, in the SVG, there seems to, uh, there is uh, mid graft dilation as well as the distal stenosis observed. So the conclusions as follows: the ROVG demonstrated acceptable patency and performance at six and twelve months in a challenging ovine cabbage model with uniform graft diameters at twelve months follow up. The saphenous vein graft controls demonstrated good patency until 12 months, but with diffuse dilation, resulting in significantly slower flow velocity with relatively lower QFR value. The further studies, including clinical trials in human, warranted to demonstrate the clinical feasibility and performance of the novel RBG PAPS graft. Thank you for your attention. Oh, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Dr. Arno for your wonderful presentation. So any comment or question from panelists? I, uh, I wonder if we have any uh, simulation like computational fluid dynamic simulation on this novel uh, type of graft before even the animal studies. Do you even think about this uh, idea? And what, what do you think? Mm, I, to be honest, I have no idea. Maybe the 
um, such kind of a technical aspect. Uh, I'm not so familiar with uh, technical aspects. Uh, Martin, could you have any comments on that? The flow of simulation in the some mechanical so, model. So my name is uh, Martin Cox. I'm a CTO and co-founder of Celtus, the company that, that produced the graph that uh, Dr. Ono uh, just uh, presented. Uh, we have done uh, computational analysis on these graphs, but we have done that based on the um, on the animal data. So we've used the uh, the animal, the NGOs, uh, to derive uh, flow patterns, and this this was recently published in the European Journal of Cardiothoracic uh, Surgery, but not before implantation. In terms of the QFR, even the absolute value of QFR in the a SVG group is lower than in ROG group, right? So I wanted to know how many percentage of QFR less than 0 0.8, 80 in two groups. Uh, you mean the feasibility of QFR? Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, all the animals I perform the QFR as much as possible. Uh, if I remember correctly, all the animals can be analyzed. Yeah, no, 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 that's uh, not my point. My question is that even the absolute value of QFR in KBG group was lower than that in the RVG group. I want to know how many percentage of QFR less than 0 0.80 in each uh -huh. group. <laughs> Thank you. So the, the threshold of the QFR is 0 0.80. So as you can see in the this here, uh, there is no animals showed the QFR value uh, less than eight, uh, 0 0.8. So, I th oh, thank you. I think that's a good point. Even the absolute value of QFR in SVG group is tended to be low, but I think it in no meaning clinical, clinically. Uh, sorry, uh, I think now it's the time. We have to move to the last speak. Please talk about uh, Agasa to introduce the last speech. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's move on to the, the, the last uh, talk uh, in this session entitled Pactanius Coronary Intervention of Surfing Brain Graft in Post CABG Patient Outcome Experience at uh, our center SPG to OM are more likely to develop occlusion. This will be presented by Dr. Um, uh, Walil uh, Islam. Uh, from Bangladesh, please. please. Uh, good afternoon, uh, distinguished panelists and chairperson and moderator and uh, colleagues. And this is my topics and I'm going to present this one. I don't have any potential to declare. Uh, uh, we know that PCI intervention of obstructed and atheromatous uh, disease is, is a real challenge for interventionists to deal with as it carries um, that most of the patients are usually older with significant coronary artery comorbidities. Uh, SBG usually presents a de 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 degenerated pattern of atherosclerosis with complex friable thrombosis formulations, higher risk of distal embolization, poor long term outcome, and higher ISF rate. SBGs are commun commonly used during coronary artery bypass graft surgery for severe coronary disease. Rates of SBG failure in the first 12 to 18 months is as high as 25%. And uh, SBZ PCI is associated with worse clinical outcomes compared with native coronary artery PCI as well. The important reason for poorer outcomes in SBZ PCI is the embolization of atherothrombotic debris into native circulation, often resulting in periprocedural MI or reduced antigrade flow. So patients uh, were enrolled in this. Uh, in the current era, with the advent and availability of different drug eluding stents, PCI or SBG vessel is an alternative to redo surgery for the occlusion of graft vessel. Although PCI is associated with higher risk of in instant restenosis, target vessel repeat revascularization, myocardial infarction, or death. Usage of embolic protection devices is class one indication by ACCAHA guidelines for SBG PCI. Therefore, we have carried out this prospective study to see the outcomes of SBG PCI at our center. The number is very small. Um, the patients are enrolled uh, uh, as a non randomized uh, prospective board who came to our center for under, underlying symptoms uh, 
and patients or CAVG patients. Total 50 patients were enrolled in this study. Digital protection devices were not used in most of the cases because of financial costing is an issue in our center. And you see this, uh, the demographic profiles, uh, patients are six, uh, average age is 62 and body mass index is 25, systolic blood pressure 128 and diastolic 76.2. And C2 risk factor is almost 2.8. And this slide shows the different risk factors, uh, hypertension, dyslipidemia, diabetes, family history, smoking. In our country, most of the smokers are male. And, uh, the, and this slide shows the ejection fraction is average 46%, fasting blood sugar 7.3, HbA1c is 6.8, and creatinine level is 1.47 of the studied population. Total cholesterol is 145. Uh, triglyceride is 152, HDL cholesterol is 33, and LDL cholesterol is 88. And this is the graph shows uh, uh, different HBG relations uh, in the studied population. HBG 2 m is 16.1%, LAD 10.7, RCA is 10.7, then PDA 5.4, PLB is 5.4, RAMAS 1.8, and LIMA 1.8. And commonly uses drug adapting states were serolimus uh, top, then uh, powered by Bernoulli's, Jotardimus, Biomilas, and then EPC, serolimus with EPC, Biolimus, and rapid accelerating stents. We found that our patient developed drug vessel occlusion on an average 11 years after CABG. Optus marginal is the commonest territory to develop significant stenosis. PCI of SBG survival outcome of this population is 93.5%, that is 43 patients in very primitive observational cord and doing well with OPD follow-up. Thus, we recommend percutaneous coronary intervention of occluded stenosis drug vessel alternative to redo surgery in this part of the world. And th this slide shows, this is the, uh, um, you can see uh, the lesion. I'm not sure the slide is running or not. Yes, we did the mirroring and then this is the after stenting. And another interesting case is that uh, this gentleman had a double uh, bypass surgery, one in one 19, 1996 and redo CABG in 2002. He had uh, repeated the chest pain, then uh, POVA to OM2 and OM3 in February 2010, PCI to ISR at the SAR costume on July, on the same year, July 2010, and the PCI of LMNC is due to ISR of L6 stand on December 2010. PCI of LMN6 due to recurrence ISR with ongoing symptoms done on July 2011. So you see the lesions are here. This is Lima and this is right corner artery. And then this is the ballooning we did. And this is in uh, July 2010, then stenting and after stenting this one. I'm showing the fixed slide this one. And then uh, repeat CAG again, there is a significant plug. Proximal to the extent of L6 and including the uh, left main as well in different views. We put the ballooning, then put stents LML6. This is the final CNA. So, but uh, trial says in the saponess brain DNA trial reported that compared with balloon angioplasty, bare metal stents were associated with higher periprocedural success. DIVA trial shows 88% these stents were of second generation. At one year follow up, the incidence of target vessel failure uh, was not different compared to bare metal stents. Basket service trial has lower incidence of target vessel revascularization in drug eluting stents group. Risk reduction of restrosis is supplement main graph with CIFAR trial. ISR rate at six months significantly reduced in CIFAR consistently with a drop of target lesion revascularization and TVR. Similarly, SOS uh, trial packet axial eluting stents showed lower rate of ISR in packet axils with significant reduction of PLR and TBR in Texas arm than diameter stents. PCI of SBG lesion is an associated with uniquely high risk of periprocedural myocardial infarction or mortality much higher than routine native coronary artery. Distal embolization manifestation as slow flow or no, no flow in 10 to 15 percent of the PCI is noted. During PCI was with distal immunization of this particle may lead to platelet and leukocyte activation, release of vasospastic mediators, and activation of chemotactic mediators. Thus lead to triad of microvascular embolization, spasm, and thrombosis 
manifesting as SFNR. Usage of embolic protection devices is a class one indication according to the ACCAHA Sky PCI guideline when feasible to decrease the risk of distal embolization, no reflow, and periprocedural myocardial infarction. This recommendation was based on a single randomized control trial, the SFR study. Thank you very much for your patience and caring. Thank you, Dr. Islam. Uh, this paper is now open for discussion. And any question or comment from the audience? We will have an only one minute discussion. Just one quick, quick question for Dr. Islam. How do you prescribe DAPT for patient with graft failure and after PCI? So um, uh, in our center, the usual uh, DAPT pro protocol is that uh, pre-procedure we are giving ticagrelor as a loading dose, then uh, combination of ticagrelor and aspirin as a ticagrelor 90 milligram DIT and uh, aspirin single OD for six months to nine months as well, mandatory. And then after six months, we um, can move to uh, Topical and aspirin as well. Thank you. Any other burning question? If not, yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Isavan. And uh, I would like to hand uh, Dr. Chen, you could just summarize this session uh, if possible. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, our friends. They actually, I have no more words to summarize this session. In general, this is a fantastic session. First of all, we appreciate a uh, team Galway led by Professor uh, Patrick Royce. And also, we thank traditional international center. Uh, they provide a very, very excellent uh, talkers about the long-term clinical outcome after either PCI or KBG. And also, thank you for your wonderful talk about the uh, importance of PCI after cabbage failure uh, because we are slightly behind the schedule. I think now it's the time to close our session. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.